And the reason I came to Keller is I knew that this area could lead the nation in technology. And, um, and I've felt strongly about it from the beginning that we just are in a location, in a place, and the time is right to, um, to, just, to just do it. How long is a day? How long is a year? How does it compare to Earth? Say, does it have life, air, rocks, craters, landforms? I figured out that about 50 to 60 percent of my students already had a phone and uh, I started realizing that we might as well find ways in education to use what they already have. And I sent off a generic email to Verizon and just said, I'm a teacher in Keller yeah. and want to use cell phones, want to talk to you about a joint venture, about a, something that uh, could be big. Verizon then brought in Microsoft and brought in their Windows mobile team. Redfly came along from Celio Corp, which is a mobile companion, and that's where you are today. So you may want to look at your science field manual and look at the words that, um, that we talked about the other day, those vocabulary words. In our curriculum, we're required to teach a comparison between the Earth and the Moon, and the students have to understand had similarities and differences between the Earth and the Moon. And in the past, I would have started strictly with vocabulary words on this project. And then uh, we'd do diagrams and do lots of vocabulary, and uh, I would draw pictures like that. I would have given them a piece of construction paper, and uh, probably a black piece of construction paper, and maybe a piece of chalk, and they would have drawn out their planet. Here is my planet, and it's called Friendship Planet. It's orbiting around the Earth. There's a lot of animation you have to do. It's a lot of hard work, and you have to like you have to really feel confident in yourself that you can do it. I mean, you my story, and I. We're working today on higher level thinking, and we're getting into the creation phase. So instead of just having them compare Earth to Moon, I had them create a planet um, and they could give it any kind of name that they wanted. And so they're making an animation to go with it and then later they'll write a Word document to describe the origins of their planet, so to speak. How it began and if it has seasons and how those seasons came about and then what the temperature is, does it have life, does it have water, and does it have an atmosphere. Once a student has done that, then they can take uh, two phones and they can beam these resources back and forth. The purpose would be for them to, to, to form a new group and take that creation one step further in creating their own galaxy, their own solar system. It's called My Planet, but you're going to have to log in and you're going to have to sync. I teach them that this is like their home computer and everything we do goes through My Projects and they click on My Projects and then they log in. My planet is the project that I, I created on this phone and then I uploaded it into Go Manage and then I pushed it out to them. The sync links us up to the main phone which is Mr. Cook's and that also updates my phone to whatever Mr. Cook has set up for our phone. They can beam the information to one another. Everybody has it. Should you be missing, not only can they continue to work but when you come back they can bring you up to speed. It's kind of like our agenda sometimes because we can have our we have our calendar. Instead of drawing on a paper, you can draw on Sketchy, and it's a lot easier. And you can still write things down. In social studies right now, we're doing a project where we have a president. We research about it, and one of the students we would like draw out our president, and then we could put details about it. We can use it for like math, for fun social studies. We can input pictures we took on the camera, so we can use it for basically almost anything. The keyboard is on here. It's pretty small for some people, so you can hook it up here and everything will be on a big screen. So if you want to go to the internet and look at a picture. We can just go to Google, type it up, what the meaning is, and like like Wikipedia or something and you can read the definition of it. Yeah. But that's part of this learning is 24-7. You know, and kids can be riding in their car 
with mom and dad and uh, conversations can happen and they can instantly go look them up. Aside from all the technology and the technology competencies that the kids gain in terms of shuffling files around and understanding image formats and those things, the concepts of project-based learning, for example, the concepts of collaboration, increased opportunities for creativity, richer project and product results, for example, is part of what's happening. Some kids, they don't benefit from just a lecture. They need to be more interactive in what we're doing. So if I can be up there talking about Abraham Lincoln and they can pull up Gettysburg, they can see what the, the area that we're talking about, it creates more of an emotional connection. If you notice, each one of them is working on something because within their group, they assigned one another. Oh, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this. If you also notice, they're sharing. This is what I found, this is what I'm doing, what do you think? And to me, that, that creates a stronger student all around because I'm not just the artist anymore. I'm actually involved in the writing, in the research. I'm doing everything. My dad, he, he is an engineer for computers and stuff like that. He's kind of used to some things like this, but he was kind of jealous because he didn't get to do it when he was in fifth grade like us.